Hey, you guys, it is Lisa Nicole Alexander with a deeper look into domestic violence. And I have the amazing Carrie Swain here with us today. And she is a hypnotherapist, you guys. And I'm super excited to talk to her, learn about her journey through domestic violence and why she chose hypnotherapy and how she's using it to assist those who experience trauma and for a lot of different reasons. So without holding us up too much, we're going to get started. Hey, Carrie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Can you please tell everyone where you're from before they start guessing your accent? Okay, so I'm from a town called Hull, as in a ship, and that is in um, East Yorkshire in England. Wow, very cool. We love your accents, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> so let, let's get started. I'm, I'm so glad to have you on because I think people don't realize how broad domestic violence is and the different tools that are available to help through trauma. So tell us about your situation and your story through domestic violence. Okay, so I've been a holistic therapist for about 20 years now, okay. and um, basically I've, I've, I've done aromatherapy, reflexology, and so I'm quite an empath anyway, and um, I was looking for some other um, string to my bow because I do like to do a lot of self-development and look for the other things to do. I get quite bored quite easily, hmm. but I found myself... Um, around the age of 30 in a relationship um, that was very toxic, very violent, very controlling. Wow. And um, what saved my life was getting pregnant. Mm. So, um, you, wow. you know, the, the same story, you think that that will change once you've, you know, you, you've had a baby with that person and it didn't change because it was obviously out of control. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so basically I gave him another chance and nothing changed. And, um, I just thought I've got to choose. It's either keep this baby and probably my own life, right. um, or have him. And I came to the conclusion that, um, if she, she definitely saved my life. So that was like a blessing from God. And, wow. you know, I don't know how spiritual people are, but I do believe that she was brought into this world to save me, really. Wow. Um, I really so love how you say that. I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but I really love how you say that because I think it's such a powerful statement for anyone who's listening. Know that this is an opportunity sometimes to be, literally save your life. I love how you say getting pregnant saved your life. Yeah, you know? well, we all, I think we all have, um, the when when we when we're going through trauma ourselves, we curve mm -hmm. because people will say to me, "But you look so normal, you're functioning," right. and I'd have fingerprints around my neck and bruises on my arms wow. and a black eye, wow. and they would say, "You you you're crazy because you act normal," and I'm like, wow. "Because." you have all these chemicals flooding through your blood to keep you, and it, it gets to be the norm. Mm. It gets to be the norm. So true. So it was like a massive hit upside the head, and I was like, what have I been doing? Wow. And I was so poorly when I was pregnant that I couldn't cope with being poorly, and I couldn't mm. cope with that as well. So that was like a big wake-up call for me. So can you so, explain the word poly? You were poly. What does that mean? That, um, sick. Okay, okay. Poly. So you're physically sick due to the pregnancy as well as yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had loads of complicated um, health wow. issues. I was in hospital for most of it and everything that you could get in pregnancy, I got, wow. you know. So, and there was, all that, there was all that to deal with. So while people were having baby showers, I was having solicitors meetings on a bed wow. in hospital, you know. Um, but what, what was appalling to me and shocking, and I've brought it... Um, to um, a government MP around me to, to shed the light on it. And also I've shown a light on it to other people is that the, the services, the police and um, social services and all the rest of it, they don't act enough. Mm -hmm. So I went all the way through court and at the time I had the finances um, to support myself through court and pay for a barrister, pay for a solicitor. I had to live with my parents because it wasn't safe for me to live by myself and I was sick. So I, I said to the solicitor at the end, I'm so, um, I'm so upset because if someone was on like um, government assistance and had five kids and they, had, they were so downtrodden, yeah, yeah, I'm a strong good. woman and I've got through it. What if those people didn't have support? Wow, that's good. How would they have coped with this? If they didn't have the finances, how would they have coped with this? Yeah. And so she said, well, they don't. 
And I said, wow. I've got to do something. I've got to do something. We've got to change some laws. Oh and um, she said, forget it. And I was like, what do you mean? Forget it. Hmm. And she said, forget it. You'll have to set up a charity. You'll have to give up your job. You won't see your daughter grow up. You'll lose everything. And you will not see change in your lifetime. And wow. I was like, oh my God. She said, I'm telling you, take my advice. And that, that really didn't sit well with me um, because I'm one for sticking up for people. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad she did wow. because, because I saw my daughter um, grow up. She's five now, but I had that time with her to just recover. Right. And, um, and basically um, now I'm going for it wow. because because it will, it will take a long time, but if we all keep pushing right. and expose people and expose the lack of action, right. and these laws were made years ago by men, they need updating. Yep. Why yes. does it take so long to get these laws updated? It's ridiculous. Agree. So I had to wow. push, I had to push for results like crazy. Um, and he actually got a prison sentence. Wow. But in this country, a lot of the offences and the um, the violence was called statue barred because the police didn't act on it at the time. You have a six month window, Whoa. and because the police didn't act on it at the time, it was passed itself by date, so they couldn't prosecute him for it. Oh, so the wow. judge, was, the judge was tearing his hair out because he couldn't prosecute on so many things, um, and it was really horrendous because I didn't realize that um he'd been video videoing in um me in, intimately with him wow. so he'd hidden and he was blackmailing me so he'd hidden cameras and wow. they raided his house and they found um they found videos of myself and him wow um on his laptop so it's a blessing that basically voyeurism murder and rape aren't statue barred wow so, he was prosecuted and got a sentence on the voyeurism and only one account of assault and stalking. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So even though it was horrendous, it got it got a result. Yeah. But my my trauma didn't just come from what happened and the pregnancy. It came from how I was treated by the police mm. and uh, the powers that be. And um there was inappropriate um, behavior from male officers towards me. Wow. And um, female officers were not supportive at all. Wow. He handed himself in the last time he attacked me. He attacked me for two hours. There was a knife involved. I was kicked in the head. This is the early stages of pregnancy. And he handed himself in because he was on an anger management program and that was one of the conditions. Now, he was interviewed by two female officers and I didn't realize um, until the judge ordered the tapes, the interview tapes to be transcripted, but they were sympathizing with him oh and they let, they let him go. Wow. They let him go. So you can see how oh I was goodness. tearing my hair out. This man could not be caught. Wow. And the women police officers, I thought would have some empathy and be right. horrified he got in their head as well. Wow. So I had bruising to my face, there was physical marks, and I was chasing the police for three weeks, asking them what's gonna happen, and they said they'd let him go with no further action. Oh my goodness. So, so in this country as well, I don't know what it's like there, but um, you have to pay for your own restraining order, which is about a thousand pounds. So wow. probably about twelve, fifteen hundred dollars so oh my goodness as a, as a as no a you don't have to pay mom, here for a restraining order wow right right so so the laws are prehistoric so getting back to the conversation with the solicitor i just i just couldn't understand why these laws were the way they were and why more women weren't fighting it's because you you don't really get anywhere so i thought if i can't change the system i'm gonna change the way women think mm. and that's and I was searching for something and that's where the hypnotherapy came in. Wow, that's good. So I've had clients, um, all different walks of life, but I've had clients come to me and even if the partner's been, the, ex, the abusive ex-partner's been dead for 10 years or if they've moved to a different country or they're not with them anymore and they're happy now, they still have all those 
fears, anxieties, they're hypervigilant, they're riddled with um, chaos, they can't settle. And it's because our subconscious mind is where our habits are formed. Right. So as, as you drive to work in the morning, you probably won't remember how you got there most of the time because mm-hmm. you run on autopilot. Autopilot, yeah. So you are addicted to the chemicals that, that your body releases, like adrenaline, when you're under fight or flight. Your body and your mind gets addicted to those. You also look out, um, you all, that's why women go back. They hate the situation, but they go back because your body becomes addicted right. to those chemicals. Right. Or also the fact that if you scratch the surface when we've when, as a small child, we have the same um, emotions somewhere. There would have been some chink in the arm or some um, trauma. It might not have been a big deal when you were five years old, but your brain can't process it. So the trauma from being a five-year-old that hasn't been resolved can sometimes be reactivated when you meet an a, a, a abusive man. So because our brains take us to what's familiar, yeah, you replay it, but wow. you will learn as well. So it's so complicated. But um, I have women come in and the trauma's still there even though the situation's gone. Hmm. So in the first session, I see a drastic um, change in them because I put them into hypnosis and you speak to the subconscious where these... Um, faulty programs are still running mm-hmm. so I speak to the subconscious and I update the program in the subconscious mm-hmm. okay okay so the other thing you've got to remember is um so for example if you'd been a victim of domestic violence you will be petrified of the person that was abusing you if I came across that person I would not be petrified at all it's because they've got into your head and you've right. they've used the tools to get into your head and they all have the same characteristics these these usually oh, men do. oh yeah i know women do it but it's usually it's usually men and um, and so that you could like it's like a tick box yep all yep. the same characteristics narcissistic sociopaths mm-hmm. but um but basically i see a drastic drastic result and it's so rewarding to see a woman transform within four or five weeks wow. and then everything just falls into place and they end up either meeting someone or the partner that they're with they end up like enjoying their life and um, I had a client um, and similar situation abusive I don't think he was violent towards her but he was abusive and um, he basically she was with him about 10 years had the kids the kids were frightened of him and he um, they'd been split up quite a, a number of years but she couldn't let a guard down with her new partner. Hmm. He hadn't moved in in about eight years. Wow. She always worried about everything and anything. She was hypervigilant. Her mind ran away with her. She couldn't sleep. She came for she came for sessions, and I swear to God, in the space of about four months, boyfriend moved in. She was engaged, and wow. um, um, everything's just wow. you know. So it's great for me because yeah. as well. I'm healing myself yeah. while I'm delivering the therapy. Yes. Yeah, that's really good. That's really powerful. I love how you're able to give examples, too, of being able to help through trauma. One of the things you said um, a few minutes ago, and I'm taking notes while we talk, yeah. so I don't interrupt you too much, but you said that even though the abuse could be over, there are still ex- this trauma experience is still there, and the actions and reactions that they have, we have, are still there because we still have the trauma, even though the abuse has ended. So can you talk yeah. a little bit a little bit more about how that happens in the subconscious even and um, why it's so important to, even though you may have left, to still seek therapy or some type of help? I mean, so you're running this program for however long and um, you basically, you, you, like I said, you, you can become addicted to those chemicals without knowing it. Yeah. So it's, and it takes some really, you've got to really look at yourself and what I'd say to you is as well, you've got to take responsibility for yourself. And I absolutely hate the word victim. And I've worked in a women's center before where domestic abuse is quite prevalent. And I said to this girl, I said, you know, her her partner stabbed her, she had her kids taken off her. There was all sorts of things happening. 
And I said, I will never refer to you as a victim. And she said, I'm not a victim, I'm a victor. Mm. And I thought that is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So when someone calls you a victim or they look at you with those poor sad eyes when you're telling the story, I'm like, don't look at me like that. Mm -hmm. I hate that look <laughs> and I hate being that person. Yes. I am so much stronger and tougher now. And sometimes we have to go through things in life. Things happen to us for a reason so that we can deliver the message to other people. That's good. Yeah. But, good. but with regards to still feeling the feeling the feelings I would say you've got to dig deep so when you've had the hypnotherapy I think it's the fastest healing modality there is okay it's not it's not for everyone it's um it's not a magic wand if you believe and you trust and you click with your therapist I I, I believe it will I believe it will work and why because do you think it's the fastest because right so for example um we're taking a lot of information yeah and a lot of that information hits the subconscious and we don't even know it's there okay okay so the only way i can access that is quieting the conscious mind yeah so when i've when i've had my person myself when i've had talking therapies it's been absolutely brilliant mm. But, but for very quick, drastic results, um, the hypnotherapy kind of really goes in. So I do believe that you have to have the talking therapy mm -hmm. as well. Okay. We, in situations like this. But the thing with the talking therapy is sometimes you can ingrain it deeper mm. and deeper and deeper. So with the hypnotherapy, this is where I'd like advise clients to do self hypnosis. Mm -hmm. If the trauma has been too bad, do it when someone else is there because you can go into self hypnosis or meditation and something could come up and it could set something off. Okay. Right. right. So I would encourage like your clients to maybe, um, do self hypnosis or meditations, guided meditations on YouTube, for example. Um, but have someone there till you know you're comfortable doing it yourself. But for example, some of the other, some of the other therapists I do like smoking cessation, mm -hmm. you know, on the packets of cigarettes, I don't know if it's the same in your, at your country, but we have like diseased lungs and diseased fetuses on the front of a, a packet of Marlboro lights. Um, mm -hmm. But a smoker will go by that and see the yeah. diseased lung because it's hitting the conscious mind okay. and you can rationalize that what happened to me. Mm. Now, if I do a smoking cessation session and I open up the subconscious by quieting the conscious mind, it's like the gatekeepers stand aside and I go in and I tell them the same thing that I've told them out of hypnosis, but it works because mm. you're speaking to the subconscious. Right, got it, got it. Yeah, That's it makes why sense. I get it. We, we have to be so careful how we program our children mm. because children are in hypnosis most of the time. Hmm. because they're creative the brains aren't developed enough yet so for example um weight loss clients they get told from a very young age eat all your dinner you'll become a, you'll be a really big girl if you eat all your dinner the subconscious hears that because it's got no common sense that girl's going to be a really big girl yeah. if she carries on eating her dinner and rewarding with food and um also um finish your dinner and you get dessert that's right, another one. That's true. So because they're hyper, they're like sponges because they're always in hypnosis. Watch your kids play. They're in fantasy land all the time. I, I refer to people as like um, when they're born, they're like a blank um, iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. We have to download our apps. Where do we download our apps from? Our teachers, our parents, our siblings, the right. TV, okay. all the rest of it. So we are like raw we're born like a sponge so we're downloading all these apps if you grow up seeing your parents argue mm -hmm. you will you will release adrenaline you will mm -hmm. think that's normal mm -hmm. nine times out of ten you'll get yourself into the same situation when you're an yeah. adult because it's what's wow. familiar to you right and as human beings we like familiar even yeah. if it's bad that's, that's so true why that's why we're making new year's resolutions um i'll start to get busy next week when the resolutions fail 
because they say that we use 20% um, of our brain. We do, we use 20% conscious, 80% subconscious, you know? Um, so, you know, it's about, it's about tapping into the learned behavior and making the unfamiliar familiar. Mm. So if someone's really struggling with doing dry January or stopping smoking, yeah. it's because you, you, you're setting yourself up for failure if you tried and tried and tried. If, the, if you need some help in the subconscious, go get some subconscious therapy. Yeah. You know, don't beat yourself up about it. Give yourself, give yourself a, a pat on the back for going and getting therapy. Because, yeah, and get the help you need. Yeah, because... because a lot of our habits and a lot of our programming is is hardwired into the subconscious. And have you heard of neuroplasticity, where yes, yes. where the the brain um, fires off um, neuropathways in behaviour? Now we can change that pathway, and it, and the more you do it, it's stronger. So you can direct your habits into a different um, right. different way of, of of you know playing out, if you like. Mm -hmm. That was so good when you said earlier too how um, how it's faster and you proved it with how you talked about um, that girl who was in a relationship for eight years and hadn't moved forward, but within four months, you know, she had fast forwarded her life, something that oh she couldn't do yeah. in eight years. Yeah, yeah. So you'll you'll see if you're stuck in one area of your life, it won't just be that one area you're stuck in. It's usually every other area. Right. You know, if you if you get the right help from the right therapist that you need mm -hmm. and it works for you, you'll find other things unfold. Yeah. You know, it's like resistance. It's like, you know, you're resisting everything around you. Yeah. You're distracted. And, and, and with talk therapy too, it's so true that the hypno, how, how different a hypnotherapy is because you could go to a therapist for a long time, for years at a time, but what you were able to do within that four months, for example, may have taken double, if not triple that amount of time through talk therapy. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, what you said too about how we're talking about it kind of just continues to ingrain it versus, you know, the opposite. So that was really good too. So you know how long, like, sorry, you know, no, no, like, mm -hmm. if you, if it, say for example, you have an argument with your girlfriend mm -hmm. and if you go to all your other girlfriends and you go, you'll never guess what she did, rah, 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 you get more and more wound up and you start talking about it all the time. That's so true. Whereas if you go, I'm not even going to, no, I'm not, I'm not listening, not listening. You've forgotten about it. Wow, that's good. Yeah, that's really true. Wow. And I think it's interesting too that I hadn't really thought about is that our children are just in this, you know, I have a two year old and so she's always playing with these friends, imagining, like always in dreamland, like you said. And, the, and they're sponges. Children are sponges and they're soaking up everything we say and do. And, you know, a lot of times with um, domestic violence, abusers oftentimes have lived in the home environment where there was abuse that they heard and that they saw. So they're literally just repeating at what they saw as children. Yes, yeah, so they need therapy as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do you ever work with any of um, with them as well or just survivors? Do you know what? For me, I just like working with women. Mm -hmm. I don't mind doing male smoking cessation. I just, um, I'm, I'm, very, um, I'm very holistic, so I'm very energy, energy mm -hmm. um, led. Um, but my niche is, is women, really. Yeah, so yeah. is mine, and it's like, don't be offended by it. I just love working with women. No. It's my gift. It's what I'm gifted to do. So, you know, yeah. we, we do know that men experience domestic violence as well, and it's on the rise. Um, yeah. but, you know, you got to kind of know what you're good at working in and, and stay in that realm. I am more effective with women. I think maybe to my, maybe to my um, detriment it's because of what I've been through right. um, and whenever someone approaches me a guy approached me about working with them I'll just say I'll be honest I could take you on but you're best off seeing my colleague who's really good in that there you go. and, that's you know, perfect. I, I want to be honest honest and open you know that's perfect yeah so yeah. do you know much about what's going on there in, in England about with domestic violence and I know that you said like some of the solicitors I think solicitors are attorneys that's kind of is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. So, um, do you know? Is it really prevalent there? Are the resources available there? It's it's horrendous. So, mm -hmm. it is. You are 
when it happened to me, um, we have this soap opera called EastEnders in this country, and it's doom, gloom, negativity, it's horrendous, and I call it dead enders because it's wow. just awful. You feel physically sick watching it. It's always wow. chaos and panic. And I used to think that domestic abuse and violence only happened on shows, you know, like Wow, that. okay. So I was totally naive. And um, wow. you, yeah, I think you're in shock a lot of the time it's happened to you. You don't believe it's happened to you. Right. And like I said, you've got all these chemicals running through your body to help you cope with it when, it is, when it, you are actually the person receiving it. It's worse to look at someone else and, and, and know what they've been through. Mm. It upsets me more to hear other people's stories than it does to talk about my own. Yeah, I agree. And I so, feel the same way too. Yeah. 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 And I've had clients in the past and I've, I've, I've spoke to my mentor and I've been mortified because they're telling me their story and I'm in tears with them. Yeah. And I'm like, you're obviously, I'm an empath, but you're hitting nerves yeah. as well. Yeah. And I used to get really upset about that, but someone said, no, it makes you, I, I, I like you even more, but it makes you human, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true so, too. But, but it, it can be really, really frustrating um, because the police in this country don't act mm -hmm. and the safe things are a civil matter. So go get yourself a solicitor. Wow. I call at the time I've called nine 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 before, and um, there were ages come in, and they were meant to come and see me the next day, and um, they just didn't turn up. Oh my goodness! So, but it's I've only ever heard one positive um, experience with the police. Now, mm -hmm. I don't want to by any means. Um, advise against calling the police you should always call the police of course if, if anything's going wrong but the best advice i could give anyone that's going through it um or going through any kind of court proceedings is keep a diary of dates and everything else i would also um yeah. i would also be really you get really sneaky so i used to when i used to go in the house i used to leave the um, latch off so I could get out quickly if I needed to. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I used to make sure, like, um, I'd hide a car key if right. I needed to, things like that. And yeah. don't, you always must tell one person where you are. Yeah, I agree with that. I know you use the word sneaky, but I'd like to say the word wise, you know, because yeah, you're sneaking behind their back and doing it, but it's wisdom. I have the extra key somewhere. I'm leaving the door unlocked. I'm not in the kitchen so he can grab something and hurt me, you know? And unfortunately you learn to live your life hypervigilant like that. You learn to live from situation to situation and moment to moment. But to it, seems, it seems crazy yeah. me saying that now because I just think, you idiot, why didn't you stay? But yeah, it's, so much right. more it's so much more complicated than that, yeah. you know, because they've been an angel for this yes. amount of time. They gaslight you, yes. they tell you you're crazy, you're mental, they isolate you from people. So you actually, they are all you've got. Yes, that's so true. Yep, and they designed it that way. That's their perfect design. And as well, they point out all the flaws in your friends yeah, that's and your true. family and, you feel alone, you know, you feel yeah. so alone and, you know, and you just pray one day they're going to change. Yeah. But I've, I've only known it once where someone, and he's actually an advocate now. Mm -hmm. He goes around um, telling his story that he used to hit his wife. And wow. he, Wait, who he, does that? He, he uh, so a guy that used to be a violent man. Okay. He now, he now um, goes and gives talks to men wow. yeah. about, about getting help and there is a different way and mm. so there is hope there but is, yes. I would say you, life's short you know life's really short and if you've got children mm -hmm. don't don't let them see it because they're going to repeat repeat the same patterns right right you know and I used to be so scared because we don't know what's in front of us we do not know we think I couldn't even make a cup of tea without him. He made wow. me so codependent. Wow. And I, I'm like a business owner. I'm, I'm right. you know. And it got to the point where I didn't know who I was anymore. I had no conversation. I had no chat. 
I couldn't look anyone in the eye. So were you a business empty. owner when you were with him at that time? Yeah. Wow. So yeah. even still through that. Yeah. And do you know what? It's again, get up, go to work do all the things because you have to just keep pushing forward right. and then one day hopefully something will click yeah. but do you know what I just it's a really scary thought but there was times when I thought today's the day I'm gonna die wow. you know and wow. and you don't have to live like that there's there's millions of men in the world there isn't yeah. just that one man right but exactly. you, need to clean, you need to clean your act up and clean your trauma because yes. otherwise you repeat the cycle. And I would say absolutely throw yourself into all the self-help and therapy you can get. You know, um, it's, it's so funny. You said earlier, I always say so funny. It's not so funny, but it's so interesting that you said earlier how when you were talking to that lady, it's like, I can pay for my own solicitor. I can provide, you know, I, I have a place to go. But what about those women that can't? And I think it's a misconception that all people who experience domestic violence have no money or are broke or a home. That's not the case. You have people in all walks of life who experience domestic that you see every day in the office, the CEOs, the business owners who are experiencing domestic violence. Oh my God. I've got, um, I've got solicitors, doctors, that have mm -hmm. every, every, you know, mm -hmm. every walk of life. And it's dangerous when they have got the money because mm -hmm. they can afford the best solicitor. Wow. They people off that it it's more dangerous wow wow that's a good point too that's a good point yeah. um i want to touch on something really quickly uh, well first of all let me go back to you talked about the man who changed and and people always said well yes anybody can change you know it, I, w I would have believed in god if i didn't believe that people can change abusers can absolutely change but it's their choice to decide to do so it is it's rare statistically it's it's rare but it's possible yeah. You know, yeah. and I think that's really powerful that he's going around sharing his story because hopefully he's making a big impact in men's lives to change. Um, but you mentioned something early and I wrote it down um, and people kind of get, um, they kind of call it victim blaming or, you know, like when I post or share about it. But I think it's very important that we take responsibility for our own healing process. Um, what did I write? I wrote it down here. You talked about it's important to clean up your own trauma. Um, and take responsibility for yourself. And I think that's really important. I'd like you, Carrie, to touch on that just for a few minutes because, okay, you experienced domestic violence. You were a survivor. You didn't do anything to deserve it. It is not your fault. That's a fact. But the other part of that fact is if you want to move forward, you're going to have to do something to make that happen. Yeah. For, for me, it was obviously get, getting pregnant. Um, otherwise, I, I, I definitely... I, I wouldn't be here now. I remember, wow. I remember saying to him, if you do not leave me alone and we do not just stop this, I know I'm going to end up killing myself. Wow. I was that low. Wow. And, and he actually spat in my face. Mm. And oh my that goodness. to me, I thought, if, I thought I couldn't get any lower. Ugh. So it wasn't the hitting it was the undignified, it, that was just disgusting and repulsive. Wow, gosh. And I actually wanted to die. I just wanted it to end. Yes. Um, but yes. I just thought, oh my God, my mum will go mad, I can't do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But you feel that love. Yes. You feel hopeless. And, you know, I've been guilty of it myself. Your friends are, your friends are tearing their hair out. You have arguments with everyone. Yeah. He's changed. And yeah. um, you lie, you sneak yes. around. I remember saying to my brother, he's so clever because he got to the point where the bruises where you couldn't see. Of course. Yeah. And he said, no, you're the clever one because you hid the bruises. Oh, wow. And I was like, oh, oh. I was like, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, like, he was right. <laughs> yeah. You get so devious because wow. they're like, they're, they're like feeding, they're feeding you toxins that you are absorbing and you're yeah. addicted to those toxins. Wow. It's, a, it's like being a drug addict. It is. It is. And you mentioned something earlier, how you're, you're used to a certain way. So it's like, I know the violence I'm going to experience at home. I know what that looks like. And so I know his highs and lows and things like that. So outside of that, who am I outside of that up and down trauma? Who am I outside of that flight, fight or flight or freeze thing? You know? Yeah. 
we get yeah. so used to it. Like you said, our brain functions, our body, you know, jumps at different sounds and situations. We get so used to it. So it's not really surprising that people go back. It's just helping them get, understand that there's life outside of that and processing mm -hmm. their trauma. So, so someone has to take responsibility for healing themselves. Right. And I'll, I'll tell you something else as well. And I've got to hold my hands up to this. I thought I was fine. And I thought if I got involved with someone again, I would recognize all the signs. Hmm. I got involved with someone again. It was abuse, but I didn't recognize any of the signs because it was so different. Wow. Well, what so was so different it was, about it, Carrie? What did you not recognize? There was no physical. Okay. Lots of gaslighting. Wow. Um, it was like, um, promise me the world, deliver nothing. Uh, okay. If I reacted, it was like, you're crazy. He was little boy lost victim. Wow. So the, that was an abusive relationship. Absolutely. Um, and it's really freaky because I thought I was too feisty for him. Mm. I connected with his um, ex-wife that he told me she'd had affairs, she was abusive. He was violent towards her. He is, he's, he's absolutely psychotic, this man. He's controlling. Wow. I never saw any of this until she showed me the evidence. And that was, that was a trauma in itself to me because mm. then I thought I can't trust myself because I've made two mistakes now. Yeah. So again, I had to go clean up my act again. Wow. Okay. Okay. What a common trait of someone that is quite narcissistic and abusive is the rush, the relationship. Right. They right. rush. Right. They, they, they have you move in with them in three months. You know, everything's rushed. Everything is over the top. The text messages and you have this euphoria. Yeah. So I used to come home, glass of wine, bubble bath, candles, flowers, presents, constant whining, wow. dining, you know, and then, then you still have that, but you have the abuse as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like, why can't I just keep this part of this mm. person and not get rid of this, but... You know, and then and then some people the mask slips and all that goes, and you're just left with this. That's good. The mask slips. That's so true. Yeah. Wow, that's so true. I hope you guys are listening and can kind of hear some of the key red flags that she's sharing that she saw in one relationship that she saw in another, but still didn't connect them. And I love what you said just now. It was really honest. You felt like I can't trust myself. I've made two decisions that were not great. How did you I How know. did you decide that you can trust yourself again? Like. Do you know the mistake um, I made? I think when you start when you start to be in a relationship with someone, you take it really slow, and I think you start asking around town about that person. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. I hate to say it, but sometimes there's no smoke without fire. Mm. If you start asking yeah. around, that we have something called Claire's Law in this um, country. And it's a girl who. Um, was murdered by a boyfriend. Okay. And um, you basically, offenders go on a register. Okay. And um, you can, you if you've got concerns or you think this guy, there's just a little bit of a side to him. I mean, because you think you imagine it because of your past. If you've right. got trauma before. That's, cool. That's true. So you question yourself. So there is, there is a register that you can go check out if someone's got a record for um, domestic abuse. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. And it's yeah. definitely needed everywhere. It's definitely needed. It's definitely the only, needed. The only flaw is um, my situation, my ex, he changed his name by depot. Oh, okay. So I don't know if um, they get known by all the names. I don't think so. But ask people and get your friends to vet them. Yeah. They can be very charming, you know. Yeah, very. But, but, but some people will see straight we'll through see the 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 chink mm. in the arm and they'll be like you know and just take me time to get yep. to know people um you know but honestly sometimes you think you're okay and then you realize you've got more healing to do mm, that's so true that's so true and when and when that happens you know and because healing is a journey it, it happens and ebbs and flows um, and I think that it's important that if we need the additional healing or therapy that we go find it. Like, it's not embarrassing. I've been out of it for 10 years. I should be, there's no should be when it comes to trauma. What do you, do you agree with that? Well, um, 
like you know you know how the english have a stiff upper lip like if people are in therapy yeah. or counseling it's mm -hmm. getting better now but it's almost like it's only just becoming okay whereas mm. i think across so the pond true. with you everyone has a therapist yeah you know, well it's becoming everyone. more and more yeah it's becoming more yeah. and more so there if you have a therapist it's kind of frowned upon or stigmatized it used to be seen as weak okay but it's like if you think of if you think of your brain as like a dishwasher mm -hmm. so you put all the pots in the dishwasher but sometimes there's food debris that gets stuck at the bottom and it's just about digging deep and clearing that out so you can wash wash the dishes properly mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but i i do think you know how can you we're so complex and we absorb so much and we have so many ups and downs in our life how can we just go through life being absolutely fine without right. any mental self-care and yeah. emotional care and people to talk to yeah. so like i recommend like if you've got an issue if you've got a problem dump it on paper because it gets it out of your physical reality mm -hmm. so if i'm upset with someone it gets written down and it gets burned thrown away whatever right. and i think oh thank god and when i've resisted against that i'm like mm, and i can't sleep and it you know it right, goes right right but sometimes the universe will throw us a curveball and it'll go i'll just test if you're healed i'm just gonna <laughs> send this person <laughs> So and just to see if you're healed problem. or not. Yeah, that's a good point too. And you know, there is a still stigma still in the United States about therapy. I'm mean, especially in the African American culture or the minority culture because that means that you know, well, we we take care of it at home or go to church or something like that. Then it'll be fine. Um, yeah. But we're really focused on mental health in the community because. I, as a therapist, I think everybody needs a therapist. Therapists have therapists. I think it's a great idea because talk therapy is wonderful, you know, but I really love, you know, Carrie, what you do with the hypnotherapy because I think that a lot of times things, like you said, from young ages are in our, in our subconscious that we think that we've healed and processed from, but we haven't. And they come out later on in life. If I have a client come to me and something like this has happened and I say to them, so what was it like growing up? Oh, my parents are just wonderful. Um, oh, been together 40 years. They're in love, this, that and the other. And sometimes they don't even remember hmm. the experience because they could have been three, four years old. The mum could have raised her voice to the dad. But right. sometimes they won't know that till they're in hypnosis. Wow. And it's the it's the emotions that they're feeling as a three-year-old. Like I said, right. the heart process, it's a massive thing. It gets pushed down. Then it's it's familiar 20 years later when someone triggers that. Wow. That's so good. It, sometimes I don't know, they don't know what it is. And it could be something really minor. I remember... I had some regression when I was training and I remember um, when I was, it must have been my first memory, maybe three years old, and my dad prizing my fingers off the back of the car because he was trying to take me to, um, you call it kindergarten, nursery we call mm -hmm. it. And I was traumatized and wow. I can only remember just feeling lonely at nursery and sat on my own. I can't remember anything else about it, white tables and that's it. When, I, when my daughter started nursery, every day I took her, they had to peel her off me. It was mm. horrifying for me. I was traumatized every time to the point wow. where I kept her off because it reignited it did. what had gone on for me as a child. It's bad enough as a mother doing that. Yeah, wow. But when you've experienced, and I must have been yeah. three years old, but every single memory, every experience we've ever had is stored. So wow. if I, if I regressed you now to a happy time mm -hmm. and you told me you were running through a meadow and there was flowers and this, that, and the other, I could ask you what you had on and you could tell me what writing was on your t-shirt. You could tell mm -hmm. me the most intricate details because it's stored. Okay. Got it. Got but it. the subconscious will only give me uh -huh. what it wants. Your subconscious is doing its job when it gives you a phobia or a fear because it's there to keep you safe. Right, right. So, for example, if I do any public speaking, I'm not as bad as I used to be, dry mouth, nerves, um, 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 all the time. Mm. That is my subconscious working on point to keep me absolutely safe and make sure I don't make a fool of myself, wow. make sure that I'm not embarrassed, yeah, but it's good. making the... Familiar, it's making the unfamiliar familiar and getting comfortable. The yeah. more times you do something, like driving a car, right. you don't even have to think about it anymore. Right. 
So getting into self-care routines, I think is really important. Okay. Affirmations, um, anything that's going to make you feel good, I advise. Now, I went to an energy, moving. Moving helps. Even if you feel really terrible, you, you, you've got all this adrenaline flowing through your body. You're on fight or flight. When we're back in the days, cavemen, we used to have a massive burst of um, adrenaline and we used to use it to make us run fast. We don't run fast. Mm. So where does the adrenaline go? Right, it sits, right, right. Wow. It sits in our organs and it sits in our digestive system and it causes havoc and it wow. causes dis-ease. Mm. So the dis-ease will turn into an illness, mm -hmm. you know? Wow, that's and wherever good. Your weak, wherever your weak spot is in your body, yeah. mind's, my, mind's my stomach, Whenever I'm stressed, that's where it goes. Wow, that's good. You know? Yeah. So there's therapies actually in America that a friend told me. And they put yoga mats out and people just do this slight shaking thing because they're releasing the chemicals out of the muscles. Mm. So movement is really movement good. Helps. I mean, I went to a class. I don't know. It probably hit America first. I went to a class on Monday night called Club of Size. Mm -hmm. It was amazing. <laughs> Music, glow lights, lights off. And honestly, I was wired all night. I couldn't sleep. <laughs> Club um, of size. Wow, that sounds fun. I was like a cheesy grin on my face the whole time. With the music <laughs> and it changed my vibration all week. I've had the best week ever. Increasing clients. Wow. I've had so many nice things. And my mood has totally shifted. I've got loads more energy. I was hoovering the house at 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> but that's just good to show. Music. Yeah. movement self-care getting your confidence back you know it's it's all part of it it's not just wow. one thing it's ongoing and um, you've got to be selfful and you've got to have boundaries gotta be self what self-full hmm. yeah like you, you've got it you've got to have some boundaries you'll know um i'll tell you who's really good to um listen to um that ilana van zandt mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like I like her because yeah, she just good. says it how it is. Yeah, no filter. She just goes yeah. for it. Yeah. 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 I love that. What do you mean by self full? So it's like selfish, but selfish has got a negative connotation to it. Mm. So um a live that I need to do on my on my on my page is actually um I had a bit of an epiphany the other day why do new year's resolutions not work mm -hmm. it's the big targets the big like you know right. i've got to be a size eight in three days you know right right it's, right. it's the um, it's the big targets it's low self-worth mm. self-hate again familiarity that yeah. lives in the subconscious but also stepping outside of yourself and saying what would someone that valued themselves do Mm, that's good. So that's good. The, other, the other night, I thought to myself, I'm starving hungry, and um, I really want a Chinese. And I thought, mm, what would someone that value themselves do? Yeah. And I thought, I'm going to have the salmon and the vegetables. Yeah, <laughs> not the Chinese. Ah, yeah, so, that's good. you know, you're saving money, you're saving, like, your cholesterol, you're saving calories. Your <laughs> yeah, and it's just everything that you do in life. Yeah. Go easy on yourself. Be gentle with yourself. Yeah. You know, there's plenty of people that are going to bash you. You don't yeah. need to bash yourself. Bash yourself too. That's and the so way good. people treat you will completely change. When you start treating yourself differently. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And say no. Actually say no. You know? Mm -hmm. And a lot of inner child, you'll know inner child work inner child work is you've got to do it because you'll yeah. keep repeating cycles yeah, so and true. I've still got to do it I know all the things but I've still got to do it that's the thing and exactly a, a really good a really good exercise to do is to actually write a letter to your very youngest child self mm -hmm. as if you are going to adopt adopt that child hmm. so if you write a letter to yourself as maybe a four or five year old you'll know you'll know what age you need to write the letter for um write the letter and it will it might be something like i'm 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 so looking forward to adopting you and welcoming you into my home and all the lovely things that you're going to do together 
then you write a letter mm -hmm. from the, the child to you. Mm. I can't wait for you to look after me, protect me, value me, love me, play with me, provide for me, blah, 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 blah. Next, letter to your parents. Because mm. everything's their fault. Yeah, right. <laughs> The <clears throat> letter to your parents. No one needs to see it. You can burn it. But I mean, let rip. Okay, that's good. There's people that have had the that's most good. wonderful childhood that I've seen in tears writing to their parents. Yeah, that's interesting too, though. The best childhood, yet they're writing in tears. Hmm. The next one is to write a letter to yourself a year from now. Hmm promising yourself what you are going to do this year that's good you give it to a friend with your address on it and ask them to send you it in a year. if you have not looked after yourself how you promised yourself then shame on you <laughs> wow that's good because you know, nobody nobody's coming to rescue you you've yes. got to be and I don't know how I don't know how many people I don't know how many people I'm quite um, spiritual and woo woo and hokey, but I but for me like um, I've done a little bit of past life regression. If you believe in that kind of thing, mm -hmm. if you don't clean your act up, you've got to come back and do it all again. <laughs> I like how you said that no one is coming to rescue you. I really like that. I think because you have to pick yourself up and do something. You have to. You can't wait. You can, yes, you need help sometimes. You need assistance, but you can't wait for someone else to do it for you. You can't wait for someone else to do it for your children. It's up to you to do it. Um, and I just want to touch on something before we leave. I, I know, I feel like we've been on forever. I don't want to keep you forever. Kind of do, yeah. but can't. So I love how you just talked a little bit about cleaning yourself up, creating a self-care routine, do movement, music, um, take care of yourself, um, self-full, be self-full. Uh, create boundaries, be gentle with yourself. Um, especially coming out of an abusive relationship, you're used to being treated so harshly. You're not used to being gentle. And I think you really concluded that with um, what would someone that values himself do? I'm totally going to quote this on my page. I'm going to put like hashtag Carrie Swain, by the way. But <laughs> what would someone that values himself do? Because oftentimes they lose their value and worth in the relationship. Yeah. And yeah. even the little things like what would they eat? What would someone, you know, what would they do? What would they do with their time? What would they say to themselves and to their children? Um, so those are some really powerful things that you just said. And I love, okay, I had to like rehash a little bit. I'm writing a letter to yourself, to your parents, burning it, ripping it up. Um, and of course, you guys, if you're listening, write a letter to yourself for a year from now. I think that's a great New Year's resolution thing to do. Instead of making all these unrealistic or huge goals right or left this year i'm going to a, be more gentle with myself exercise more eat better whatever it is and then give it to a friend to mail to you i love that idea by the way yeah well we did this in my training mm -hmm. and um the, it, there was snot tears <laughs> we were wrecked i love but, it you know my I, I love i love my mentor I lo he's the, one of the most beautiful souls in the world awesome. but what he did was he didn't tell us we had to read it out loud Oh yeah, I wouldn't have told you. All those either. letters we had to read out loud. Wow. And that was really painful. Wow. Really painful. Yeah. It was physically painful. Wow. And it was painful to listen to everyone else's story because wow. there was some grim stuff in there. But you'll find most therapists have been broken in the past and that's right. what qualifies them to be so good. That's it. it. So good. Because, because the, you can yes. Yes. You can, and there comes a point in, in the healing process. Sometimes you are, you, you cry, it, you break down, it wrecks you so that you can build yourself back up and move forward. Well, someone once said to me about, um, you don't grow in your happy times. Yeah, like grow, so growing pains are called growing pains for a for reason. A reason. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? Yeah. Out of every bad, horrific situation, you will always find something good. Yeah. But just yeah. knowing your self-worth, would you let someone treat your daughter like that? Right, Keith, would, would you? I would kill someone. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Yeah, I would lose it. Like, don't even. Yeah. Would you let yeah. someone treat your mum like that? Would you let someone treat an old lady like that on the street? Would you let someone treat your best friend like that? Yeah. No. So yeah. you've got to step outside yourself. And yeah. just treat yourself like your best friend. Yeah, that's good. 
Thank you so much, Carrie. Thank you for coming oh, on the podcast. I know, me too. You're so powerful, such a powerful spirit. Listen, how can people contact you, get in contact with you? I know that you're in England, but we have some England followers and listeners. So I want to make sure that they can follow you as well and on Facebook, social media. So tell us. Okay. So I don't do a lot on Instagram. Um, it's not really my platform. Facebook is, is my platform. So I have um, a page, Carrie Swain, um, professional clinical hypnotherapy on Facebook. You can add me as a friend as well. It's just Carrie Swain. Okay. You'll see a profile picture of me. Um, I do have a group. Um, I talk. I do quite a few lives in the group, and that's quite a spiritual group. It's called awesome. Hypno Vibes. Hypno Vibes, got it on Facebook. Yeah, 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 on Facebook. So that that is really my my platform. Awesome. So if anyone wants to reach out, I can do sessions on on Zoom on on um, Messenger or Zoom or whatever. Um, so awesome. yeah, if there's any way that I can help anyone. Um, but what I would say to you, if you are really struggling that I got my results and my support when I contacted my MP. So like, a, you know, like um, you have people that um, for government around you. Yes. Yeah. And if the, if the authorities aren't helping you, you'll have a complaints commission, but, mm -hmm. but you have to, you have to take responsibility for yourself yes. and you don't have, there is life outside of that. You don't think there is because they've stripped everything from you. Yes. But, but there is, there is friendships, there's love, there's life, there's holidays, there's children. Do not stay stuck. Do yes. not stay stuck. Yes. Yes, I love it. And you, your story was a beautiful example of just having everything, but then losing it to start all over, to continue to, to be whole and healed and thriving. Your daughter's five now, you said. Yeah. Oh, She's absolutely that's... gorgeous. She's oh. the best that's ever happened to me. And she literally saved your life. And so if you are a woman and you're listening and you have children or you're pregnant, this could be the moment that can literally change and save your life. So hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. Just stay safe. Just yeah. be, just be very, very, um, mindful and plan. plan. Yes. yes. Don't, don't fire up and fight back. Just, you know, say mm -hmm. you're going somewhere to the store, whatever, and exit just yes. even if you have to call the police before you leave because you'll know the um the victim I hate that word but that you're most at risk when you're leaving or you're becoming Absolutely. stronger yes so what yes. i would say to you is just have an exit an exit strategy yes. and please don't go back because you don't need to yeah oh i like that don't go back because you don't need to they are not feeding to. you good stuff they are feeding you junk that's good Thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much. You guys, thank, thank you for you. tuning in to A Deeper Look with Lisa Nicole Alexander. Go ahead and subscribe and check out Carrie Swain at Carrie Swain on Facebook, Hypnotherapist. Thank you, guys. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.